everyone, it's Denise with In Liquid Color, and today we have our final color spotlight of our mini eight week series. I have enjoyed this process so much. Thank you guys so much for all of your support. Uh, it's really been overwhelming in a good way, and um, I've, I've just absolutely loved being here with you every week and exploring these colors. Um, I know a lot of you are sad to see the series go, um, that you guys have left comments and, and wanting me to keep going with it. Uh, I released a vlog on Monday that explains kind of what is happening after Color Spotlight, um, that I'm going to be doing another mini series on mixing, but also there's a big Patreon announcement in that vlog. So if you're interested, please go ahead and check that out. In short, I'm just going to mention it here in this video because I think it's pertinent to this particular audience, is that I have two different goals levels on that Patreon that directly would help out this series. My first mini goal at $250 a month on Patreon, we're already over halfway there, is that um, I will go ahead and make blog posts of every color spotlight that I've already done. So I will include pictures and um, notes and my transcripts of kind of like what I researched and talk about in the video so that you all have access to that. My second goal, and perhaps the one that you might be more excited to hear about, is that if we can reach my second goal of $500 a month on Patreon, I will reboot the series and you guys as patrons will get to choose what colors that I do. So I really hope that we get there. I think we can do it. Um, I really love this community and even if you can only throw a dollar or two to Patreon, that could help because there's so many people who watch these videos every week. I would love to be able to restart the program and that is how we could do it. So thank you guys for listening. Let's go ahead and get started on this week's color spotlight on Dioxazine Violet. Alrighty, so our final episode has been reserved for what you wanted to see round out our color spotlight series. Most of you wanted to see a purple, so I chose the only one that I had a couple of different brands of so I could compare them and arguably the most commonly used purple in watercolors, Dioxazine Violet. Dioxazine Violet is a cool purple typically made from pigment PV23. This color can be light fast or fugitive depending on the brand, and Daniel Smith's Carbazole Violet is the most permanent out of those tested on handprint.com, with other good choices including M. Graham and to a slightly lesser extent Windsor & Newton. Extremely impermanent versions include Schmincke, Brownie Artist, and My Mary Blue. This is a semi-transparent, heavily staining pigment that is very darkly valued. This pigment is used all over the world in a variety of applications including paints, inks, plastics, and even foods. It has a high tinting strength similar to the phthalo colors, and it also exhibits a large drying shift, lightening considerably and losing saturation as it dries. Because of its dark value and its mass tone, most brands look very similar. However, when diluted into their tinted forms, the variations can be seen. There are two different versions of the pigment, a blue shade and a red shade. However, this is generally not labeled as such by pigment manufacturers. The blue shade is much more fugitive while the red shade can hold its own in its light fastness. However, because the shade is not indicated from the suppliers, paint companies must take it upon themselves to source the most light fast pigments for their products. Many artists decide not to use this paint altogether for that reason. However, if you know that your paint manufacturer has a trustworthy product, there's no harm in using it. I personally have a tube of Windsor Violet from Windsor Newton because the store was out of the Daniel Smith version when I originally purchased it years ago. If I were to buy this color again, I'd absolutely go with the Daniel Smith version that is more permanent. While I don't have Daniel Smith's version here to swatch today for you, uh, you can still find it as usual on handprint.com. I also have Jane Davenport's version called Royal, and please note that cameras have a really hard time picking up purples, but M. Graham's version is noticeably cooler than the other two. Jackson Violet mixes well with so many other colors, and for that reason it was really hard to decide which to show it with in this video. So I decided on the following. I just got a shipment from Schmincke of their new colors for 2017. I will have a swatching video for you on this next week, but they also serendipitously sent a tube of their titanium gold ochre, which is not one of their new colors, but mixed very, very well with dioxazine violet for this color spotlight. It's made from PBR24, which is the same that many manufacturers use for Naples yellow hue, and mixed with dioxazine violet, it makes these lovely dusty grays and lavenders. Also from the Schmincke paints, I received their new color of Cobalt Azure. Mixed with the violet, it creates these beautiful, soft, heavily granulating colors, ranging from blue to periwinkle to lavender.
Mixed with burnt sienna, it makes gorgeous, rich brownish purples that I was dying to use in a painting. I did, however, opt to use some of the other colors for today, but I can't wait to use this combination more in the future. Finally, we have dioxazine violet mixed with perylene green, which I'm sure you can tell from these last couple spotlights that perylene green is becoming an indispensable favorite of mine that I would really love to include on the next spotlight series if it's able to get funded. These two dark colors mix together to form a wide range of moody grays and deep purples. Another notable color to mix here would be Hansa Yellow Deep or Gamboge, which is a orangish yellow, and it mixed with the dioxazine violet, it forms really rich browns. Dioxazine violet on its own isn't exactly a color that you would find on animals often, so I use the color mixing segment as inspiration to use the violet to create a wide range of lovely grays to paint a harbor seal. For this painting, I only used three colors, the dioxazine violet, of course, plus perylene green, and the titanium gold ochre from Schmincke, though you could also use another Naples yellow in its place. This week, I set out to create a very loose painting of this harbor seal while trying out my new Princeton Elite brush. I also used the Neptune for later stages of the painting because it's so much softer for glazing, as well as I used the silver black velvet brush for some of my smaller detail work towards the end. Thank you all again for joining me for this amazing series. I have had so much fun and I really hope that we can work together to create the next one. I have so many colors that I would still like to share with you all, so please remember to check out my vlog on Monday to learn more or directly check out my Patreon page to support this channel and the Color Spotlight series. If you like what you saw today, please be sure to like and subscribe to this channel and for my subscribers, make sure to hit that little bell icon by the subscribe button if you'd like to be notified when my videos are uploaded on Wednesdays, Fridays, and often Mondays at 7 a.m. Pacific time. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time.